you tickets? <laughs> Are you available in 21? <laughs> I haven't been 21 in a long time. <laughs> no, I meant 2021. Uh, I know, I know, I know exactly what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, actually, I don't need tickets because my wife was smart enough to get the tickets for us before the, uh, the, the big award show, the Grammy show. Um, it's I'm, called I'm, the Tonys on Broadway, Ron, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> was not the show on the Grammy? We actually won the Grammy too, but... That's exactly what I was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Who's interviewing here? Who here? But you know what? You I, know, reporters are I never I didn't wrong. win the Grammy. I only won the Tony, so <laughs> okay. I'm more concerned about that. And I won the Peel... Uh, no, never. <laughs> so how many out here have seen um, the, the uh, Tony Award winning? Thank you. Thank you. Well, for those of you who haven't, we're going to show you a little clip. And for those of you who have, you know you can never get tired of it. So let's watch this. Oh, wow. Where do we watch? What do we got? How does a bastard, orphan, son of a whore and a Scotsman dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean by providence impoverished and squalor grow up to be a hero and a scholar the ten dollar founded father without a father got a lot farther by working a lot harder by being a lot smarter by being a self-starter by 14 they placed him in charge of a trading charter and every day while slaves were being slaughtered and carted away Across the waves he struggled and kept his guard up Inside he was longing for something to be a part of The brother was ready to beg steel Um, so I want Someday. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I want to talk about the billion dollar business this is becoming, yeah. but first a couple questions about how you got from Oak Park, from Detroit to there. Um, did a little background reading to get ready for this, and I come across some quotes, I think, in the New York Times that I thought were really, um, uh, really searing. Yeah, uh, you were talking about your father, a, a man who was a businessman until he got in a motorcycle accident and suffered some limited brain damage. And you said as you were growing up about your father, he was a loser. Um, he, he, you're wincing. I'm going to come right back to that. Um, he lost his income, and you guys lost your house. You went from a nice house to a medium house to a, what you called a shitty house or a shit house. My anger and resentment at my father for all his failures was combustible. He was fiercely, fiercely proud of me. But I was ashamed of him. I was so angry for so long, and I grew to hate my house. I remember thinking, how am I get, going to get out of here? What does that sound like? Again, you sound like Hamilton. How am I going to get out of here? How did you get out of there? Um, Let me, before that, don't answer that question, not how you got out of there. We'll come to that in a minute. Are you still ashamed of your father? No. Why were you ashamed of your father? And why aren't you anymore? Um, those um, quotes are still very painful, provided... 100% affirmation of me. My father always said yes to me. His own failings were colossal, and the pain and hurt he caused to so many people around him was often unbearable. But what a child needs from their parents more than anything is to be affirmed. And my father did affirm me from the moment um, I came into uh, my home. You were adopted middle child? Yes, Between two uh, yeah, I'm an adoptee, until the day he died. And what I have learned and grown to love is that that affirmation is, in fact, the most important thing he could have ever done for me. God bless him. And then do it on Monday night of the Grammys. I said, I sat with Tommy and Lynn, my director and my author, I said, there is no world where we're going to come off well. There is no world where we're going to look good on that Grammy stage. So we have to say no to the Grammys. So we said, we don't need the Grammys. We're going to say no. And then you know what they did? They came back to us and went in, we went into Lynn's dressing room, we sat on the floor, 
and the uh, producer of the Grammy said, okay, we're gonna come to you. Wow. We will bring all the trucks and we will plant our trucks on 46th Street and we will go live from the Richard Rogers Theater and what we were able to do is rehearse for eight hours that one number and then with the live trucks and all those cameras make do Hamilton for the American viewing audience for the very first time perfectly. And that's how I listen to Hamilton and serve Hamilton because if I listen to Hamilton and do it right, then we're going to serve the audience we're gonna educate the audience properly, and we're gonna build and grow the audience who are going to ultimately make this into a billion dollar venture. It took, it took so I, I focus on the quality, I focus on serving the play, and then we'll let the money follow. It sounds like a very good media strategy for, for Cranes. Focus on the audience. <laughs> yes. Um, it took Wicked 12 years to uh, make a billion dollars. How long is it gonna take Hamilton? Yeah, Wicked, by the way, it actually, in some ways, it took less. Wicked grossed a billion dollars in 12 years on Broadway, but in fact, at this point, Wicked has already made and profit a billion dollars because here's what happens. We make a certain amount of money on Broadway, and then we go on a tour, and more than 50% of our income will ultimately be derived from touring. Hello? That was All me, sorry. That was you? I'm new at this. It sounded like a trash can yeah, fell down. I'm not used to being on stage. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so we actually earn more of our money from touring, from going to Chicago and LA and San Francisco, and of course, Detroit. There we go. I'm not throwing away my no. shot. When are you coming to Detroit? I'm not gonna tell you when I'm coming to Detroit. Oh, I will guarantee on. you this. We're coming to Detroit, and we will play my favorite theater, the first theater where I ever saw a Broadway tour, Shenandoah, starring John Raitt. And um, I've loved the Fisher Theater ever since I went there in um, 1978. Once again, we had no money. Who got me to the Fisher Theater? My father. Wow. Um, it's true. And, uh, and we'll be at the Fisher Theater at some point in the next few years. And we'll have as great a run as we had when I did Rent at the Fisher Theater and Avenue Q at the Fisher Theater and in the Heights and West Side Story. Just try to pin you down. Is it safe to say you probably can't get to Detroit in the next two years? No, that is not true. Uh, if you're coming to New York, I'm gonna put some tickets on sale uh, over the next three weeks, so you gotta watch for my tweets uh, from no, no, our Hamilton. The, no, you can't, get the, you can't get the show here to Detroit in the next oh, two years? Uh, is that a fair, uh, or at least two years out? Uh, what, what are we in? Uh, within two and a half years, the show will be here. We'll hold you to that. 2.5? Would you, could, would you like to close on telling the well, story 20, about your 30 father? months. Give me 30 months. Do you remember when like 30 months was like forever? Like middle school took like 10 years to get through. Was saying, and, and, and like now, you know, my kids are like in seventh and eighth grade and I'm like, well, they're leaving for college in like eight minutes. Anyway, go. We, we want wow. you here now. We want you here now. They want us out. Yeah, we it could, says 58 we, we, seconds. It does, we can leave and, now. Oh, we're going up now. Or, or we can end with you. I would yeah. love to hear the story about your father bringing you to the Fisher Theater. How'd that happen, do you remember? Well, this is once again the story of education and teachers and family, which is that, by the way, I told this story in front of a Senate subcommittee the day before yesterday in Washington when I was um, uh, testifying for legislation to outlaw these computer robots that go in and buy up all the tickets and then place them on StubHub at four times face value before you've had a Ooh. chance. And we're gonna pass that legislation in Washington this year because it's the only thing the Republicans will agree on. Every Republican in this in room, I'm so right. pissed off. Oh, there's I'm none sorry. out there. No. By the way, the Republican, they, hey. Anyway, Peggy Noonan, she loves Hamilton, I love her. She's, she's beautiful. I'd sleep with her. Oh! No, oh. Just, just, I just gotta keep it funny. Your father. What did you ask me? In My Fisher Theater. <laughs> I know Peggy Newman. Okay, so I had a librarian, Mrs. Finn. I'm gonna forget that ultimately they found out that she was fraudulent and she was, oh, she was a Dr. Finn and they found out she was lying about her credentials, but that was 20 years after I left. Anyway, we had a librarian at Frost Middle Focus, School Jeffrey. in Oak Park, Michigan. Okay. And she said to me, I just saw this show called Shenandoah at the Fisher Theater and it has this, it has a young, uh, uh, two young kids in it, a white kid and an African-American. She would have said a black kid that then. It was 1978. And they do the best number in the show. 
and it was all about freedom. It was, a, it was a musical about the Civil War, and it's a good musical. It's not a great musical, but it was a good musical. And she said, you've got to go to this. And I came home and I told my mom and I told my dad that I want to see this show called Shenandoah at the Fisher Theater. And though we had no money, and there certainly wasn't enough money for all four of us to go, um, the tickets were $10 to sit in the mezzanine. And my father went there and he bought two $10 tickets. Wow. Now, this story's kind of funny because that night, for some, we, we, my mom, mom, you made shrimp salad. So we made the, she had made the shrimp salad. It was a delicious shrimp salad. And we watched the first act, and it's great. And two, halfway through the second act, I'm getting sick. Your and mom got you sick? I, I'm not saying she, the, the shrimp got me sick. <laughs> so before the end of the show, I run to the bathroom, and I'm throwing up in the bathroom at the mom. Fisher Theater. We're driving home on the Lodge Freeway. I'm throwing up out the window. And that was my first tour. But I will tell you, I've been back to the Fisher many times since, but I've never eaten another shrimp salad. <laughs> Good on that. Thank you, man. Thank you, Ron.